compare and order decimals. We're going to talk about three different strategies that you can use to compare or order decimals. First, the one that I like the most and I think uh, makes you think the most about what you're doing is to think money. When we talk about the place values in a decimal, we remember that the ones place is always to the left of the decimal point and then it goes tenths, hundredths, thousandths. Well, we can also relate a piece of money to each one of those. If we're talking about the ones place, then it makes sense that we would think about the dollars in this, um, in this place value. Well, as we go to the right, we, t we break each of those place values into, um, a, we take one tenth of each of those. So if we think about a dollar and we chop it up into ten pieces, one tenth of a dollar would be a dime. So the dimes represent the tenths place. If we take a dime and chop it up into 10 pieces, we would get a penny. That also makes sense because it takes 100 pennies to make a dollar. So a penny is a hundredth, one hundredth of a dollar. And then from there, if we took a penny and chopped it up into one penny, chopped it up into 10 pieces, we would have a tenth of a penny. Now that's not a real thing, so we're going to call it a nonsense. That's going to be our funny word for it in our class. Um, but really, a, a tenth of a penny would be how in money you might represent the thousandths place. So let's look at this number and think about how much money this might represent. This is the ones place, so this is five dollars. And in the tenths place, that represents a dime, so I have four dimes, or this would be 40 cents. This four would represent 40 cents. In the hundredths place, I have two pennies, or two cents. So, so far I have but if we don't include this seven, I have $5.42. You know that, that's how you write money all the time. Well, when we add this seven onto it, it's like I've taken a penny, chopped it into 10 pieces, and taken just seven of those. So this seven is smaller than one penny. It's not a complete penny. It would be like maybe that much. So it's a, a, a very small amount, still smaller than a penny. So let's use that idea of knowing how much money a decimal is worth um, to compare some numbers. So I see this amount right here, it's six dollars twelve cents, you can cover up that thousands place and think about cents and then a little bit more, two tenths of a penny more, two nonsense. This is six dollars and thirty seven cents. So I immediately asked myself, would I rather have $6.37 or $6.12 and a little bit more. Well, I'd rather have $6.37, that's the greater amount. Down here, this is, I can see that both of them have $40. Then we're getting into the cents. Well, this nine, even without any digits behind it, this nine is in the tenths place. The tenths place is represented by dimes, so this is nine dimes or 90 cents. And I might even want to um, add a little zero there to, re to make it look like money that we are used to. Over here, I see my 87 cents, and I cover it up and it would look like 87 cents, and then three tenths of a penny, three tiny little pieces more. So 87 cents and a little bit more. Well, I would rather have $40.90 than $40.87, so this one is greater. And I hope that you remember when we talked about comparing whole numbers that I said it, uh, you could count the digits and a number that had more digits would be a larger number, but only with whole numbers. That does not work with decimals. And here's a good example of that, why that strategy doesn't work for decimals. Notice that this decimal has four digits. This decimal has five digits, but this one is still bigger because this nine is worth more than this eight. A second strategy that you can use for comparing and ordering decimals is to compare the place values. Um, here are two different decimals that I've been asked to compare, and I would start by lining up their numbers at their decimal point, lining them up vertically. So I've rewritten them here putting my decimal points one on top of the other and then matching up, um, just recopying the numbers. And then I'm going to work left to right comparing the first place value where the digits are different. So start with the biggest place value because 
if we think about money again, our dollars are worth way more than our dimes or our pennies or our um, nonsense. So in the ones place, they're the same. In the tens place, I immediately see that this eight is greater than this zero. It doesn't matter what falls after that at all. It just matters that I have more in the tens place here than in this number. So this is the larger number, and I would write it as five and eighty-three thousandths is less than five and eight hundred three thousandths. Same thing here. I've rewritten the problem vertically. Take a look at the ones place. They are the same. In the tens place. We see that this 4 is greater than this 3, so 6 and 4 tenths would be the greater number. The final strategy is especially useful if you have a long list of numbers that you're trying to order from least to greatest or greatest to least. You can use it to compare, but I think it turns out to be especially helpful here. Um, and I call it the spit out the zeros. At, you're going to add zeros after the last digit in a decimal until all numbers have the same number of digits after the decimal point. So let's look at an example of how you would use that. I see that I have one digit after the decimal point, three digits, and two digits after the decimal point. Well, I want all numbers to have the same number of digits after the decimal point. So since these have three, I'm going to have to make them all have three digits after the decimal point. So I can spit out some zeros. And this 8 and 1 tenth is the same as 8 and 100 thousandths. It's the, it, they're worth the same amount. So I'd spit out, I don't need any extra zeros here nor here. I'm going to spit out one zero so that I have three um, numbers after the decimal, and here I'm going to spit out one zero. So now, I don't have to compare the ones digit. They're all the same. So I'm just going to look at these numbers in the um, after the decimal point and compare. Well, I hope that you see this one right here is 41, and all of these are bigger than 100 in the, in the decimal part of the number. So this has got to be the smallest. By the way, I'm going least to greatest. Let me remind myself by putting small and big so that I don't forget which direction I'm going. So this is the smallest one, 48 and 41 thousandths, and I'm going to cross them off as I go along so I don't go um, repeat any. I see two that are in the, that are 100. This one is 100 thousandths, this one is 140 thousandths. So this one is less, 100 is less than 140. But remember that we didn't start off with these extra zeros, so let's go ahead and get rid of them and use the number that we started with, which is 8 and 1 tenth. Then I need to use the other one that has a 1 in the tenths place. And I'm going to just leave that zero off. I don't have to have it. And then I see I have 401 compared to 410. 401 is less. And finally, 8 and 41 